Hello, this is Mark Wiltshire. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Explore Finland radio show. For this episode, I was really happy to be invited to the nearby town of Lapua for a tour of the Kulturikeskus Vanhapalku, which translates as Culture Centre Big Bang. You'll find out more about that very shortly. I was fortunate in this episode to have two expert guides, Susanna Overstains, the cultural director, and Sakari Hanhimaki, the museum director, uh, at Kulturikeskus Vanhapalku. Um, we were talking so long that this is another two-part episode, so this week we'll take a tour of the entire cultural centre. Then, in a couple of weeks' time, will be a more detailed walk through the Lapua Nyoki Museum to discuss the history of the ammunition factory in Lapua, the right-wing Lapua movement, and a special photography exhibition charting 80 years of life in Lapua. But for now, let's go for a tour around the culture centre, Vanhapalku. Okay, so today I'm at Vanhapalka Kulturikestus. I think we'll get my guests to explain the name of that a little bit better in a moment. We're in the town of Lapua, which is a short drive away, 20 minutes or so from Seinijoki. Uh, I'm joined by Susanna Overstains and Sakari Hanhimaki. Uh, thank you both for joining me today. Thank you for joining us. I only discovered uh, Vanhapalka a year or so ago. Somebody, I was doing some work in Lapua and they said, oh, we, we should go for lunch. Let's, I'll, I'll, we'll go here. And so, Vanhapalka, I, I don't know. I'd heard, I'd heard about this place having... Uh, it's a cultural centre and having a festival, and that was basically what I knew. So I came here completely, uh, completely open-minded, and we drove into the car park, and I just saw all these old red factory buildings, and I was like, "Oh, this place looks cool." And we went for lunch, and the little the cafe down there is quite impressive looking looking place as well and I thought I want to know more so when this year 2019 I decided to get out and do some more interviews for the podcast I thought I must come here and learn a bit more about it so I reached out to you Susanna maybe you can tell us a little bit about what what this place used to be yes well um it's been a cultural center since 1990 end of 1990 but before that, the um, the buildings were empty, like there was nothing here for a bit. And that was because, um, well, this was built, this main building where we're now at the moment, this was built in 1923. Correct me, Zakari, if I'm wrong, if I'm lying. But <laughs> it, yes, it was built um, to be a saw. But, a sawmill. Um, yes, yeah. sawmill, okay. yes. And... Uh, um, and then um, the government bought it uh, to start an ammunition factory here. Right, okay. And this ties in somehow to the name then? Yes. So, yes. Uh, Vanha Pauku is quite interesting name even for the Finnish speakers. No one really understands what it is and therefore I really want to use the word Kulturikeskus, Cultural Centre Vanha Pauku. It um, translates as a cultural center, old bang. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm modest, which ties um, which ties into the ammunition yes, factory, indeed. aspect of it. The uh, the workers back then were calling this place Bauku already, and um, Sagari. Would you like to tell something about the the uh, factory times? Yeah, uh, well, the, as Susanna said, the, it was around like 1910, 1920. They were they were planning uh, having a sawmill next to the river, and they built some some of the buildings back then. But pretty soon they figured out that the, somebody made miscalculation with the flow of the river so it was way too slow flow for having any kind of sawmill activity okay. so they were kind of left with buildings they couldn't use and at that point the state finished state gaming and was like they will buy the area and prepare a cartridge factory there the person that designed and built that sawmill got lucky that they found somebody to take over the place. yeah okay 
Um, and did it remain an ammunitions factory all that all that time up oh, until? Yes, until 1976, when um, the yeah, there was the in 1976 there was the explosion in the Curtis loading section, which was a separate building. What what happened there? Yeah, it's quite a long story, but 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 but, but it's short. There basically were like a, a, a half automated devices they called the robots, robot day, which was loading ammunition to the cartridges and uh, basically there was some kind of malfunction and multiple mistakes happened in a row which caused, caused the whole building to explode. The, basically like the gunpowder storage was right above the factory building and there was like small, small funnels that came down next to the loading machines and Basically, something with the machines didn't go as planned, and there was a spark which went through the funnels up to the storage room. And it, it was designed that the, if there's an explosion, the explosion would go upwards, but it didn't go as well, and it also went downwards. And the result was that there was, I, I can't remember the exact number, but many injured and 40 people dead. It sounds like a horrific chain chain reaction that just you know one thing after another after another went wrong and this was a massive explosion wasn't it yeah it, i think it's still one of the biggest uh, explosions and or the accidents in peacetime in nordic countries the sound of that must have carried for many kilometers away from away from here. Well, for example, um, one of our friends um, was five years old back then, and she lives in Hellama, uh, maybe 20 kilometers away from the center, okay. or from this place, and she heard it, and she, she remembers she it. She remembers hearing it, wow. Yes, and many, like everyone that I talk to, um, Finnish people who've been alive then they remember the news because it covered really fast the whole Finland and um, people tried to call their relatives and friends to Lapua if they okay and you couldn't really reach anyone because of the connections back then yeah. right? <laughs> you didn't have whatsapp <laughs> so uh, at some point people even believed that the whole Lapua exploded really the, the word the word yeah. got around and nobody 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 could reach their friends so they mm. thought that the whole town must have been well luckily destroyed. that wasn't the case but it was very very unfortunate and the uh, the the people who died in the explosion they um they were very young young women mainly 35 young mm. women and five young men and one unborn baby died in the explosion so it's it's Actually, I have a I have a friend who lost her mum in the explosion, and we were just talking one day, and this story came out, and it's heartbreaking, awful, and and that that story is clearly replicated across you know four, maybe forty different families that lost lost someone that day. Yeah, it was really traumatic, and in some cases, both of parents were in the explosion. And, right. Okay. And yeah. And many of the workers who were just injured or were present at the explosion, it was really traumatic because they were their work work workmates who were in the explosion. And it's, yeah. it's still a hard topic to discuss for many many of those people who were there back then. Yeah, and actually, the, um, other friends of mine, my business business partners, I think their grandmother worked at the factory at the time. I'm not sure if she was there that day or not, but I think. The trauma is felt by everyone, and everyone connected connected yeah, to it as absolutely. well. Um, so that was in seventy six, and then there were some years that it was it was not in in use. Yeah, well, the factory moved out. Uh, it's located now in between Labua and Seinäjoki, well, on Labua's side, quite nearby. Uh, and in the nineties, the city of Labua decided to buy this area and everything inside it so um and and to found a cultural center here 
which was great. And uh, in the end of 1990s, the library moved here. That was the first one, first thing that arrived. I think we're going to go and take a look at a few different different parts of the of the centre. Um, but maybe you could just explain some of the some of the different buildings, what they're being used for, and what we're going to go and take a look at. Yeah, well, the, like we, we have the names on the walls of the other buildings that are still kept kept in use, and they kind of correspond their old old names. Like the, this main building we are now is called the Isotera, the big factory. What was the main building for operations? And like the section where, where the library now is was one of the biggest, like the machine house where they have all, all the machines. So what else is in Isotera's now? No, no, there's the, um, of course, the library, but then there's also the Isopressi restaurant, and then we have the Cultural Historical Museums, the uh, Lapua Cartis Factory Museum, uh, Pyhalahti Photography Shop Museum, and then the Lapua Movement Museum. And also we have the Cultural, cultural, cultural Office operates here and upstairs we have the um, community school an art school and also the music institute so quite a bit in this one building yeah what what other buildings are there around around the isoteras well what would makasini be in english uh, kind of kind of a storehouse Sto- yes yeah, it's closest. so that that's uh for businesses okay. like there are shops downstairs and then uh, little offices upstairs for example, uh, Malla School Brewery uh, pub is located there. Um, then we have Työkalu Tehdas. Well, well it come, derives from the uh, tool factor because all the machines were built on the spot and basically from scratch. So also the tools were pretty much made for the specific machines here as well. So the, it was like the old tool, tool section where they have all the tools and machinery parts and everything. But now, now it, it has the Lapuan Kankuri. The, they're, they're, a, they're a textile manufacturer, right? Yeah, yeah. Local, yes. local textile company, yeah. yeah. And there's a gym and... and um, Lapua Theatre. There's a theatre in there, like a... Yes. Like a, um, and also on the site there's the there's cinema. There's a cinema, yes. So, in its own building, so you it, it's it's a cultural center, but also like a community center. People can be coming here at, at many different times of the day for all sorts of different activities. Absolutely, yeah. We also have the um, art museum that's about eleven, twelve years old now. Um, I'm really proud of that. It's part of the Lapua Lapua City Museums. Um, uh, Southern Ostrobotnia doesn't have, uh, or only has two art museums. One is here and one is Nelimarkka Museo in Alajärvi. So um, we're really proud to have art museum here. Um, and then we have quite new thing. We have the um, Luyulanga Osasto Creative Community, where we have local artists uh, renting a space, and then we have um, artist residency where um, international artists are coming to work. They stay here for a month or two. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty nice. That. And they they also um, hold different types of events. And that yeah. sounds like a lot of things for us to talk about. Yeah. So we're going to go and have a have a look round. Where are we going to go to first? Where should we start? Well, maybe since we are in the um, main building, let's start from here. Let's visit the um, uh, library quickly okay. and then run through the museums. And I want to show you upstairs as well uh, the community school, the art school. Okay. It's very beautiful. And uh, you definitely have to see Isoprassi, yes. the machine. Yeah, the ma- <laughs> I want to hear, I want to learn more about the machine. We'll get on to that shortly. So let's go. Let's yeah. go. So now we're in the library. This is where the redevelopment of Vanhapalku started. And this is where our tour is starting. So, Susanna, over to you. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Look it, around. It, it is. It's very, industri- it's very industrial. Obviously, we're in a, we're in a factory, or a former factory. Um, 
and that has been used to create the character for the place. There's lots of bare brick. There's lots of big ventilation ducts going along the the top, and and this sort of mezzanine floor with books on on different levels throughout the whole throughout the whole place. What kind of things go on here? Because because Finnish Finnish libraries are much more sociable places. Uh, I was just telling Sakari, one of my colleagues studied for half a year in Korea and she was telling me that there you go to the library you have to be silent and it's almost the opposite here well um and I think also if, if you talk about Finnish libraries the uh, Audi in Helsinki yeah, is exactly. now showing a new direction where libraries might be going but still I'm quite happy that uh, we have this Ordinary library where you still with have books. to be <laughs> yeah, with books yeah. and uh, um, where you still should be quiet. <laughs> we we But, ask for special permission yes. to be noisy for five or ten minutes. So. Hey, let's go upstairs. Okay, I'll show you where the teens can spend time and charge their phones and okay. read their books and um, do their homework. But as we're walking along here, we're walking past some shelves that. It looks like a, a library in a stately home. There's all these leather-bound old books. But we're going up somewhere. It's a fantastic view. So now we're on the mezzanine floor looking over the library. We're looking down on the on the shelves on the ground floor. You can also see the river. So um, we're in a, in a good corner um of the uh, main building uh back there you can sit down and read your books there are a few computers where you can search the books um and up there you have lots of place to study uh, there is um it's like a youth club <laughs> it almost bean, is. bean bags and, yes. and tables and books and things but still everyone are behaving really well here um The, the young people are actually, they come here to study or to talk quietly to each other. Uh, these are that, new, they're really comfortable to sit down. That's, that's the sound of Sakari sitting down on a big blue beanbag. <sighs> this is nice. <laughs> that's right, isn't it? I think that one of the, like the main points in libraries in general in Finland is that they are and more and more developing towards being like living room kind of communal space more than just a place where you go get a book and go go away yeah i spent i spent a lot of time in libraries as a kid in the in the uk and it had that you know it was a place you went you took things and then you left again And the tables were very sort of wooden chairs, and it was a desk and you sat there if you wanted to work but also libraries um well i remember uh It was 2001 when I moved to the UK to work as an au pair for a bit. And, um, you know, I didn't have, I had a phone, but no internet connection on my phone. I went to the local library to talk to my um, parents, like to, call, did we have Skype back then? I can't remember uh, what 99? we used. I can't, I can't remember now. No, It seems like these things have been around forever, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, but the, but library was the first place to find internet. So libraries ha have always been the places where that kind of you know they how to say in uh, they bring they bring general access to these new yeah. new technologies. And, and going back to your comment about Audi in Helsinki, there was this row of 3D printers. Oh yes, and so, we have one here. I was right, just okay. going to say, so, so I was just going to mention because we have the community school. And they have a 3D printer. We actually have one now um, in the museum as well, <laughs> I have to mention. But, but uh, so they're here introducing how their 3D printer yeah. works. Also, um, they bring all kind of technologies here for the elderly people to show, you know, special type of, types of mobile phones, for example, um, to just like to give an access to technology to absolutely everyone. But um, I'm a big fan of books and reading myself. Um, so so when we talk about libraries, I would still like to talk about the books mm -hmm. and the, the most important thing, because 
well, maybe people don't read enough anymore, or um, does it matter? I don't know, but reading skill um, is really important. So um, I, I love the, the, the fact that they bring um, authors here so you can meet a writer, so they have these events, and, and like uh, next autumn, um, the library is going to be the main host of our uh, poetry day okay. where we have different types of poetry, like uh, open mic for okay. people who want to Interesting. read. Yes. So what we can do in the, in the show notes is maybe put a few links to some of these events and hopefully these will be recurring events in the future as well. So whenever the people are listening to this, they can follow those links and find out when the next activity is is coming up because that, that kind of poetry open mic sounds quite, <laughs> quite interesting thing. yes i'm afraid we still don't have an event um online for that but no no we have to no, make we one find it. we can find somewhere to link to where yes can, where yeah definitely and it, if you sure. just follow uh one Habaku website you can find all these events from there okay so in this building is also the museum should we take a walk over to the museum and uh, hand over to Sakari for his uh, his thoughts on some of the different exhibitions over there? Absolutely. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so now we're in the museum, or do you want to give it its full proper name? Sakari? Yeah, so we are now in the uh, Lapua Cartridge Factory Museum part of our museums. So as we really cover the museum. Um, the factory kind of started as a sawmill, but it really carried out as well as plants. So they, the state bought the area for their own car- bullet cartridges production in in 1920s. But to put it in perspective, the Finnish state became independent in 1917, and before that, Finland has had been about 100 years under Russian rule, and basically Finland had the Russian governance, like the police forces, the military ammunition, everything came from Russia. But after that, when Finland became independent, it was necessary to have the state-owned own production for ammunition and law enforcement and everything. And uh, in 1980, there was kind of related, this was the civil war in Finland, which was fought uh, between the house owners, the whites and the socialist threats and that was also partially because there was a power vacuum in Finland at that point so it, there wasn't really like police force and the one reason for the civil war was that there was like a Suojeluskunta uh, kind of a protection brigade kind of movement in the rightist white, white parts of Finland and in the the red red areas of Finland, where there was separate, similar kind of operations, that they basically kind of worked as a paramilitary, as, as the name implies, kind of peace-oriented paramilitary service, and of, which eventually collided and <laughs> they, they became two kind of almost armies or, or forces that were fighting for for power, basically. Yeah. And there was the this is the this is the civil guard, isn't it? Basically, there's a there's a civil guard museum, for example, in Seinäjoki. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's related to that, that phenomenon. Yeah. And we are in a, a traditionally white area. Yeah, yeah. Politi- the, politically. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's really really white and nationalistic kind of region, huh? and it has been so throughout throughout the years. And basically, they like them. Uh, the borderline divide between the red and white Finland was kind of like uh, like the south, southern Finland was mostly the red red area, a bit bit more more north, north from Tampere region, and um, like area north north from there was mostly white. Right. Okay. But yeah, that was like the really short, really short history yeah, about yeah. the background why the factory was prepared prepared for the state's use and the factory operated until 76 until it moved after the explosion. Where 
Shall we head to next? Well, Where do you want to show me next? I, I'm, I'm going to quickly show you some empty rooms. <laughs> <laughs> this is our gallery. Um, there is an um, Ostrobotnian photography centers gallery here this one and as you can see we are in the middle of changing exhibitions so okay. there's nothing here but next week we have opening in this gallery and in the Kate Ridge gallery as well so um, we have both galleries have about 10 11 changing exhibitions yearly okay and uh, it's a good place for for well any um, any artists to to come and exhibit their work, and and for for people that are listening, we've walked from the library to the museum to the gallery, and probably used no more than two hundred steps to cover all those spaces. So it's, it's really compact area, and you can take in all of this. And what if, if someone wants to come to the gallery or to the museum? Uh, is there any cost for them? To no, come in? no. Uh, good question. Um, we are free. All our museums are free. So, so yes, anyone can walk so, in so and you enjoy. So you can just come in for 15 minutes, check out one part of the uh, exactly. exhibits and then leave yeah. and come back another time and, and take in some of the others. Yes, absolutely. Very nice. um, you probably heard about the uh, museum card um, where you can enter to any museums in Finland, okay. like you pay 60 euros, about 60 euros yearly, and, uh, and that's a really good card to um, enter uh, museums, and, and people often come, come here and they offer it for us, and we're just like, no, you don't need this, you, you can go You don't even need <laughs> no. a discount card to get no. this <laughs> Okay, um, and also nearby here is this Iso Brassi it's a pr- restaurant. Restaurant. Unfortunately, it's it's uh, closed today, so we can't go in. But we can go upstairs. Let's let's go and let's go and take a look at it. And uh, I want. Let's go upstairs so you okay. can see yeah. the um, isoprasi. Yeah, machine. I want to. I want to know why it gets its name. So we're now looking down into this isoprasi restaurant. It's a uh, lunch. It's a lunchtime. It's a lunch place where the people of Lapua will flock to. I've been here for lunch a couple of times, and it's always really busy. And there's this enormous piece of equipment in the middle. Um, how to describe it? It's got these two enormous wheels either side of it, about I don't know, four or five meters up in the air, um, with chains going up to the ceiling and they're attached to the beam it looks like they they would have moved along back in the day what what was this particular space back in the day and uh i've got a good idea i know why why they didn't move that piece of equipment (laughs) but uh uh, sakari what, what was it yeah well basically the name kind of gives it away the isoprasi restaurant it's the uh, big press, the press basically means kind of a process of pressing and stretching metal, metal to the form of a bullet cartridge. So the, basically the big press, it, it was used to make a really big <laughs> bullet cartridge. So they, it was actually pressing the, the cartridge shape. Yeah, basically the big wheels kind of rotated and there was the, I don't know what's called the mandate. It's like a, like a piston. Or yeah, something. piston. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. Yeah, the piston kind of pressed them on the mold and stretched, pre- stretched and pressed them into the correct shape. Yes. Okay. And basically, the uh, cartridges that were made here were for the like heavier weapons and things like uh, anti arti- anti aircraft artillery bullets and shells and things like that. It's a, it's a really interesting kind of centerpiece for this for this restaurant and. Uh, the floor plan, the, the, the floor space of this restaurant is not that huge, but the ceiling goes up so high to accommodate the press that it gives such a feeling of space. And it looks, it, somehow it looks like, looking through here, that that used to be outside, but then of course there's another outside wall, the other side. It's, it's an interesting looking space because there are windows looking into it from 
many different sides. So it's it's definitely uh, and the oh actually the food there is is great as well. So you definitely have to go there for for lunch if you if you come to to visit. I highly recommended. So so now we've we've come upstairs from the um, museum and the gallery area, and we're in this auditorium uh, for for some kind of live performances. What goes on here? Uh, everything, <laughs> everything. Okay. Um, live performances. Yes, we have uh, classical music every Thursday evening when the uh, children and other students from the music institute uh, are having concerts here. Okay. So any Thursday evening, apart from the, during the summer time, you can come here and enjoy classical music. And uh, and then of course we have other lectures here and uh, even some film nights sometimes. And this is called Alayoki Sali. Alayoki Sali, yes. Alayoki is the um, area in Lapua where you can see lakeus, okay. the flatness. Yes, okay. <laughs> the flatness that this Etela Pohjama is so famous for. With the door slamming behind us, <laughs> where, where have we just entered into now? We're now in the uh, community schools art school. So is this... Kansalaisopisto. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, the uh, Kansalaisopisto. Um, there you can study basically whatever, <laughs> like in any other Finnish uh, community schools, mm. lots and lots of different type of um, uh, opportunities yeah, to study. Lang- yeah, language lessons and exactly. music and exercise and all sorts of, all sorts of different things. Yes, but... Um, this uh, art, this is art school. So you can you can get the basic education, art education here. You can study um, crafts, theatre, dancing, and and uh, like painting um, or art in yeah. general. Here, yeah. so I'm, I'm, this is actually where I started my career in um, in the cultural centre. I was a teacher in the um, film film school okay. here in the art school. So. The, I'm, I'm, I really like this. You, you, feel, at, you feel at home. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And it's, um, if we just take a look at the, um, what is it, pottery? Yes. So the ovens are there. Um, this is the classroom where they they mold the clay. Mold, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yes, and the ovens are there. Um, crafts. Here, as you can see, the mannequins. Mannequins for making clothes, I guess. Yes. And then in a different building, we have the, the media, you know, the photography studies and, and um, filmmaking. I, I, I didn't. I didn't hear you say podcasting. Is there, <laughs> there's, there's not yet Ma- podcasting. School. Not yet, but mm. that's a really, really good idea. Maybe you should offer to teach. <laughs> 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 And we're now just heading away across the across the hallway from the uh, Kansalas Opisto, and this is the Music Institute that we're heading towards now. So this is where you can study almost any instrument. Um, well, you need to apply to the Music Institute, but my, my son, who's six years old now, is just applying, and he his first option is piano, second is guitar. And third is percussion. So, any of those Fing- you can study here. Fingers crossed for him. Yes, yes. Let's hope that he's going to be a student here. And so, the, this is where the children that are studying here would then go on and do their performances yes. in the yes. in the auditorium. Something going on here. Should we peek? If we, if we can peek. Hi. Hi. We're just recording a podcast about Kultori Keskus and doing a bit of a tour. So if anyone wants to make some music for me to hear while we're standing out here talking, that would be that would be lovely. Um, now everybody's very shy, yes. see? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> But as you can see, um, lots of instruments around. Um, you can try and play the piano. I can't play anything. 
Oh dear. Is it join the music again? Oh yeah, I don't there, think anybody would take on that challenge of teaching me how L- to play. Look at that big thing in the Well, corner. I could bang the drum, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> No, soittakaa nyt, niin tulee vähän musiikkia. Tämä on hirveän tylsää, kun minä ja Sakari ihan kotetään. Me ollaan tällaisesti arkisesti, ettei me nyt haluta mikään niin kuin aina. Mutta te ei tule kato valokuvaa ollenkaan, niin se vaan kuulutte, että they're gonna play something for you. Ettei tarvitse kaivaa täällä kesällä. Vai voit pelimanni be in English? Traditional music. There's normally, well, there's ten of them in in the group of traditional music. Orchestra. Yes, okay. Yes. So we have a, a, a small section. These guys took some time to be persuaded to get their instruments out, and now they're going to carry on, aren't they? Yes. Okay. Okay. Put it down here. Should I, who should I credit with playing the music? Anu Harvisto. <laughs> okay, I'll make sure that I put that on the on the blog. And um, well, you've all just told your name, so everybody will know who's playing. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. You may now finish your meeting. Kiitos, 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 Okay, Susanna. So we're taking a, a very short walk from Isoperdas and. The acoustics have changed. Yes. Different, different sound, and we're in a an exhibition space. Where are we? We're in a uh, Lapua Art Museum. Uh, Lapua Art Museum a, is well around twelve years old now, and uh, well, the space itself is is really fascinating because it, you can see that we have these walls that you can move around. And during those past 12 years, we haven't had exactly the same um, layout. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, it's very versatile. We have from three to four uh, exhibitions yearly here. We try and present art from Lapuan and Ostrobotnian artists. Uh, also Finnish artists and then um, we're also trying to have like at least one international uh, exhibition in one in every one or two years 
this is our uh, collection exhibition made out of our, our collection now that we have here. And, and then we have Heikki Mäkituuri. Um, Heikki Mäkituuri's exhibition during the summer. How often does the uh, exhibition change? Um, well, three times a year. Three, for, uh, yeah, we have three exhibitions, sometimes four exhibitions yearly. So one is then, what, three to four months. And then the walls change and... <laughs> and also the, the colour of the walls and we have some wallpaper there. So it's always a big job to change the exhibition. But And what did this building used to be? Because we're in a different building now. Uh, this used to be a pintakäsittelylaitos, which translates to a uh, like chemical processing of the like the surface of the metal and steel that you were used to carry this. Is this open all the time, or are there certain times of the week or the year that it's open? Six days a week, uh, from Monday to uh, Saturday, from eleven to five on the weekdays and, and then Saturdays from 11 to 3 p.m. Susanna, we're in another building. Again, different sound, different smell. This is an older brick building. And look at these. This is a building that hasn't been really fixed after the explosion, okay. so you can see all these cracks. Oh, really? It is safe, so don't worry. Okay. But look at that yeah. bell. Yeah, there's like a, a thick metal band that's been kind of screwed onto the onto the wall to hold it in place. I think before I leave here, I'll take a picture of that, and that, that can definitely go in the in the show notes. <laughs> um, well, what building are we in now? Where are we? This is called Lyjulanka Osasta. We have our creative community here. Uh, I'm going to show you upstairs where we have the artists' um, studios. Okay. But uh, let's uh, peek into this room because you can hear these people having fun. I can. I can hear lots of laughing. There's some ladies working. They're going to be terrified when I walk in I, with a microphone speaking I know. English. No, let's uh, scare them a bit. This is Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi. How are you? <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Would what? you, Christine, mind to tell Mark what's going on here? Oh, okay. I'm a silversmith and a jewellery uh, um, artist. And I teach some people to do this um, in the Adult Education Centre as a teacher. And we have a class right now. So and we've just gate-crashed your class. Yeah, yeah. But um, you can do that because we have mellow. Yeah. We're having fun. So you don't we know. heard you having fun and that's exactly why we came in okay, to yeah. see what was what was going on. So working with silver? Silver, yeah. Usually with silver, but, you know, copper, brass, whatever. And, of course, if they want to, they can use anything they choose. Interesting. Yeah, so I'm trying to be a teacher that um, gives them the opportunity to try everything, but they usually stick to silver, okay. copper, and brass. So. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's, it. that's really interesting because this summer I'm getting married. Oh. And I need two wedding rings, but we need <laughs> platinum. So anybody, <laughs> does anybody want to make two wedding rings? That's now, everybody that's understands, but nobody wants to look at me in case, in case they get themselves a job. Yeah, platinum is too expensive. <laughs> well, that may be, that may be yeah. true. Yeah. You're scared to use it. Okay. And, and the other thing is that you need uh, different equipment for that because, uh, you know, it doesn't mix with the others well, so... Okay, so I have to stick yeah. to more traditional roots and go to the shop and buy yes. something. Okay, well, it was <laughs> worth it was worth a try anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's we're it. Upstairs already or no, we're just we're going there now. now. Okay. Yeah, it's mine in the corner, the, the place where it has the most stuff. In it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go and see Christine's stuff. Then. Yeah, let's go. Let's let's go and see yeah, Christine's stuff. Just a suggestion because you said uh, a rugby club. Mm -hmm. You should um, make a podcast about the girls that have the roller derby. Ah, that's league. interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. I didn't know anything about that. Okay, now you know. Well, <laughs> what, 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 where it can I? Point. Okay. <laughs> where can I find more about that? In Facebook, if you check out uh, Seniorki Roller Derby. Okay. It is a women's sport, so they're all girls. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know the sport, but I didn't yeah. know it was happening here. Yeah, they have a league here, so. Interesting. Go and check it out. See? Now, yeah. come here. We've recorded know. one. I've got a new yeah. new topic. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> and thank you for letting me <laughs> join you for, for five minutes. Yeah, no problem. I hope she's not too well. <laughs> yeah, she's looking after me just fine. Kitos, Kaki. Kitos. Hey, hey. Kitos. 
And here we are upstairs now. This is the artist workspace, is that right? Yes. Um, we call this a creative community because also downstairs we have space for creative people. So um, there's more people who, who are working with their computers, but up here we have lots of easels. Yeah. So it's like a jungle of easels. <laughs> That's right. Um, in 2016, I had this idea of of creating uh, like a community and, and space for for creative people. As I was working as a journalist and photographer, my whole life then um it was it was nice but it was also very lonely so I was working from home and I I didn't have anyone to share a coffee and and you know share the struggle that you have when when you're working as an entrepreneur so so and also at the same time when I started uh working here at the cultural center I um I started um artist residency so in 2016 we had another uh building then but it's been torn down now it was in a really bad shape so we moved here and this is a great space um we have wait i have to count one two three four five six seven eight local artists who are renting a space here as you can see from the floor they okay. divided <laughs> into they got, these <laughs> they got their own their own space marked out yes so uh eight local artists are are um renting a little spot here and then we have uh the residential artists international artists who are who are also working here we have had artists from New York, Sydney, Berlin, Moscow, Tehran. So these are artists that come to Finland for inspiration or something, yes, and they, come they here. have a they have a, a workspace here for a period while they're over here. Yes, yes, they are applying to a residency program, okay. and uh, and then if they accept it, they arrive here, they pay a little fee, and they just come here to yes get inspired to have. Um, certain privacy to work because yeah. as you know when you're at home you have your dishes and you have your bills to pay so this is this is the place where can they they can totally um just concentrate on their art um so this is not a, a public space that people can visit but still people listening might be interested to apply for that residency uh, yes. as well Who, and who it's, knows? um well, right now, no one is here, but often if you come during the weekdays, we have people working here. So you can always, there's a doorbell downstairs, so you can ring the doorbell and just come and, come and visit the people because uh, they are artists who are working here, but they also sell their work. So I bet they are happy to show okay. they work if you, if you want to buy local art, welcome to visit. And there we can see over in the corner... Christine's corner with all the stuff in it that she just told us about. So. Christine is is um, one of our international artists. That way, that she has like maybe ten uh, international exhibitions yearly. She's a jewelry artist, so um, she has a lot of interesting stuff that she creates jewelry from. But not platinum. No, <laughs> no. But look at this. This is her. Uh, latest artwork it's called blow me <laughs> okay <laughs> and uh, it's this um this looks like a little metallic kind of cushion with a a tube going in one end and a ring of some sort on the top it is a ring right this is what you call jewelry art uh, you can wear it maybe not the most practical jewelry if you want to go and work, but hey, you're able to, and then you can fix it if my, it gets flat. I think my silence speaks volumes. I'm going to take a picture to put up because I think I think my description was quite good, but I don't think that people will really understand <laughs> what I'm talking about. Might be. That picture will be in the show notes, so if any of you want to see what this is really all about, oh. despite the risque name. <laughs> I just love this place. It's really nice to come here, like for example, 
last winter, if I pop in, um, there might be like 10 people cooking together and working together, having fun together. So I think I, I really succeeded in this, that this is a, a, a place where you get feedback if you're working and you're struggling and, and help. And you, and, and you've built some kind of community here. Feels nice. Yes. Really happy about this. So we're in a, a, now another building. What, what was the name of this building? Tuokalu Tehdas. I can't remember back now to when we started talking what that was in, in English, but what is it used for now? Right now, um, over there is Theatre Lapua. Ah, okay. They were the Amateur Theatre of Finland in 2018. Ah, okay, like, uh, award-winning. Yes. For, as the as the Amateur Theatre. Okay. Yes. So they they very good. They very good. Um, they have a few shows yearly, and here uh, we have like shops. Right now here we have some sort of uh, local foundation every week to to share. Uh, what they're doing to introduce their agenda. Mm-hmm. So uh, right now we have Yukan Tupa. Yukan, Yukan Tupa is, uh, is a place where disabled adults can go and uh, work daily. They they not in. Uh, they don't have a contract, but but they they do all sort of uh, crafts. And as you can see, those brushes there, they've made and then they are selling the products. Ah, so the pop-up shop that we were just standing in is selling the products that are made by this foundation. Yeah. Whatever, yes. Like. Okay. Yes. And it's giving disabled people the chance to do some work. Yes. Um, and this, and that's what the rest of this hall is used for, is for this pop-up shop. Yeah. And at the other end of this hall is the shop for Lapu and Gankrit. This is a, a, a local textiles manufacturer, and that's there all the time, isn't it? Yes. So it's quite it's quite nice to have this this kind of cornerstone of the building that's always there, bringing bringing customers in. But then you have these pop up shops nearby where I don't know the community gets to yes. be involved as well. But we're now we're now outside. I can see that there's this uh, blue chapel building. Is this where there's a, a monument to everyone that that yes, passed in the explosion? Um, yes. Um, and next to it is another, <laughs> of course, red brick building. Um, and is this is this the cinema yes, building? Yes, this is the cinema. It, it looks it looks like such a small building from the outside. That's there's a great cinema inside. Okay, and I, I think this is really um, really something for people to, to to know is that around here there is this kind of independent cinema scene. It's quite strong, you know, with. I believe there's something going on in Yalasjärvi, there's Martin Tupa in Ulistaro, <laughs> um, and I, I featured that in one of the earlier podcasts as well. And now here, this is Bio Marilyn. There's a picture of Marilyn Monroe in her prime up there on the on the door. And I, I don't know, I think supporting these, these smaller independent cinemas is, is quite important. I haven't been here before. It's one of those that I always look for something to come and to come and see because it's. I think it's worth it supporting is. them. Yes, yes. Uh, well, as you can see, uh, Avengers Endgame <laughs> and and what else? Aladdin, Pikachu. Yeah. So you have plenty. Yeah, yeah you, you have <laughs> plenty, but you have to choose carefully. I, I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah, shall we check if it's open? It's not. Maybe it's a little bit early in the day. That's a, that's a shame. Um, but but again, it's. I, I wanted to to mention it. I'd be. I, I'm. I'm really interested to see how it looks inside because we've just walked around the entire outside of the building in. It's definitely about 30 bigger. <laughs> it's bigger than it looks. <laughs> it's, it's bigger inside than it looks from the outside. And then along alongside here, we talked again about the the shops and it just just all the all the reasons that people might want to come to Van Hapalku. It would be. Good spot to finish our tour into uh, in in the local brewery. I, I, I would pub. love to stop in the local <laughs> pub, but I'm I think it's probably not open yet, and also I need to drive to drive home. But oh, but Malasku 
brewery. Let's still is, peek in. Let's let's peek. <laughs> let's peek in. So we've come. We've now left left the area of Malo School. We're walking back towards Isodeiras. I think it's probably time to end the tour. Susanna, thank you very much for inviting me here today. Thank you, Mark. And Sakari, who got pulled into this at the very last minute and didn't know anything about it. Thank you very much. It's been really interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. So I think that just about wraps up another show. I'd like to say thank you to Susanna and Sakari for a fantastic experience. Thanks also to Anu, Lena and Annina for the lovely music. Much appreciated at very short notice, as you heard on the uh, on the recording. If you enjoy the show and you want to show your support, then please take a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. It will help raise the profile of the show. Connect with me on Facebook, Explore Finland Radio Show, on Twitter, at Explore Finland, uh, or Instagram, it's Mark underscore Explore Finland, uh, or on the website, explorefinlandpodcast.com. I just wanted to give a shout out this week to Essa. I bumped into Essa when I was at an ASI Corps. Senioki football match. Uh, Essa told me that he listened to the football podcast um, and there will be a little bit of football content coming your way, listener of the Explore Finland radio show. So uh, watch watch this space and uh, and see what comes later in the summer. Um, but thanks, Essa, for your kind words. And uh, it's always nice to meet people face to face as well as uh, get comments coming online. Of course, you could also spread the word about the show to your friends on your social network of choice so let them know about the show invite them to explore finland with us and also if there's a subject that you want me to cover in a future episode contact me via the website or social media i'll be happy to hear from you but until next time thanks for listening and see you again on the explore finland radio show bye bye